uh, the director of uh, AVEA in Hamilton. Uh, Sarah, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Welcome to the Learning Challenges Part 2 Workshop, Strategies for the Classroom. My name is Sarah Gill. I'll be your facilitator. Uh, as mentioned in Part 1, this webinar is part of the 2016-2017 Online Community of Practice webinar series. So this uh, series is in its second year. It's organized by a committee of the Learning Networks of Ontario and is being coordinated this year by Literacy Link South Central and supported by Contact North. I'm very thankful to have Sarah Stocker with us today from Contact North to provide technical support. And of course, you've heard from her in terms of the reminders and the, the documents from last week and evaluation. Everyone will be muted throughout the session so that we're not affected by background noise, as we obviously heard when I was trying to type a quick email to Sarah. If you have a question or comment, please uh, type it into the text chat. Both Sarah and I will look regularly to see if there are any to share and respond to. We can also give you the microphone so that you can add a comment or ask a question. In this case, please click on the raised hand button and you'll be given the microphone. You can press the control button to turn the mic on or, or click the mic button. So just so that you're aware, as Sarah had mentioned, the session is being recorded for future playback. There are three documents that you're going to need for the session, and they're available as handouts and will be sent after the session as well. And they are the Learning Challenges Strategies uh, sheet or document, the Direct Instruction Examples, and the Learning Challenges Strategy Worksheet. And there's one for literacy and basic skills practitioners that we're going to be looking at today, but there's also one specifically designed for employment services practitioners practitioners that will be shared after the session. So you'll see the links as we go through. In most cases I'll be referring to people with learning challenges as learners, uh, just so that you're aware. For those coming from employment services or other community programs, this would be synonymous with clients. So first, like last week, um, I'd like to, you to answer a quick poll to identify where you're coming from, whether that's uh, Literacy and Basic Skills, Employment Services, Ontario Works, or other community partners. Okay. There's a poll here. If you wouldn't mind, uh, thank you for sharing in the text chat. Uh, if you wouldn't mind clicking on uh, where you're coming from. Okay, so it looks like primarily we have participants coming from uh, literacy and basic skills, but we do have representation from employment services uh, as well as a, a community partner as well. Uh, so please feel free to uh, ask questions that might be specific to your work, whether that be in the text chat or make comments. So thank you very much for doing that. So as I'm introducing myself, I definitely encourage you to share in the text chat why you're hope, what you're hoping to learn from this training, and if there are things that I don't touch on, um, I'll try to respond by email if there's additional resources that maybe everyone needs. For those that maybe were not with us last week, I'm the Executive Director of the Adult Basic Education Association, which is the Learning Network in Hamilton. I've been with the network for 14 years, and in those years I've been primarily an academic assessor and lead trainer. In that time I've specialized in understanding and assessing learning challenges in adult learners. Um, I developed the Learning Challenges Assessment Tool for Adult Literacy Learners in 2005. It has since undergone several revisions and quite recently been updated to correspond to the Ontario Adult Literacy Curriculum Framework and Essential Skills. The Learning Challenges pre-screen that we discussed last week is one piece of that assessment. Um, in the beginning, there was some training across the province for literacy practitioners, so some of you may still be using the, the very first version that came out in 2005. At this point, the assessment is really for use uh, through the Learning Networks of Ontario. However, there does seem to be some interest in opening up the most recent version uh, to practitioners across the province, so I'll be considering that and sending out further details later this fall um, through the networks just to get a sense of interest in that training. So looking at um, the agenda from part one from last week, we talked about what are learning disabilities and learning challenges, the learning challenges characteristics sheet. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at the learning challenges pre-screen 
and looking at examples and markers for uh, visual, auditory, and organizational challenges. And then we talked a little bit about factors to consider. So before we move into the strategies piece of this session, uh, I just wanted to make sure, are there any questions or comments about last week's session and the content that we covered? So I, I will move on to talking about our objectives, but I will kind of take a look at the text chat as we go so that if there are comments about session number one, then we can, uh, we can respond to that. So I'm hoping that at the end of this session, you'll have a better understanding of learning strategies, accommodations, and assistive technologies for learners with learning challenges, a better understanding of direct instruction and how to use it with learners, and of specific strategy development as well. Uh, for each of the, the three types of challenges. So our agenda today is talking about strategies, accommodations and assistive technologies, direct instruction, and looking at a strategy development exercise and sharing further resources as well. So in terms of learning strategies, you want to consider rapport. It's very important to develop a trusting relationship with your learner or client. They need to be comfortable with you so that they'll share important information and provide feedback on what is working and what isn't. You also need to constantly assess and adapt. Learning challenges are not constant or consistent. Learners will have on and off days, so you need to watch, ask questions, and adapt. What might work one day might not work the next. Next is constant feedback, and that's really important. Discuss strategies on an ongoing basis and build it into the routine. And we'll be talking about that a little bit as we go through. And offer multiple explanations. An explanation that seems clear to you may not be to your learner. So you need to explain things in different ways and using different learning styles. So let's look at a few definitions. Learning strategies are specific techniques that can be customized to fit a learner's strength and learning style. For example, phonological awareness training like rhyming, blending, etc. for learners with visual processing challenges. Another example is a running record, which is keeping a written or oral record of lessons for review for learners with organizational processing challenges. So what's important here in terms of the classroom is that these techniques could be helpful to all learners, but are really critical for those with lear learning challenges. Learning accommodations are considerations made for the learner that take nothing away from the skill being learned, but accommodate their special needs. For example, allowing a learner with auditory processing challenges to use an empty room to work, or checking and possibly changing the lighting in the classroom for learners with visual processing challenges. Assistive technologies are accommodations that utilize technological resources. For example, a word processor helps with handwriting issues and has tools like spell check, grammar check, templates, etc. Word prediction software suggests a word a learner might want to use based on the first few letters, or things like speech recognition software that allow a learner to dictate what they want to write. So in the resource that, uh, that is being offered to you, the, the learning strategies handout, it is quite uh, comprehensive. There are various sections through there. Uh, there are many sections of strategies in the handout. It's here for you as a download and it will also be emailed to you after the session. I think Sarah is going to open the first page for us uh, just to take a look and so that you can identify what it looks like. But the sections include instructional approaches and class culture, general learning strategies, learning strategies for learning styles, strategies for specific challenges, an introduction to assistive technology, strategies for other factors, self-awareness, self-direction, further education and training goals, and employment considerations. So I am going to take you through the sections and pick out a few from each to really highlight, although it really just kind of is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's actually in that document. So I invite you to use the tech chat or put up your hand to add a comment as we go through some examples. Have you used these before? Do you have a strategy that you've used before with success? So let's learn from each other and, and share our knowledge.
So here's what the strategy development resource looks like. So as you download it, you'll know that you have the right one that we're referring to. But again, you won't need to, to look at this in detail as we go through the session. I've built it all into the slide deck. Uh, but after the session, uh, I do invite you to kind of tour that document either digitally or maybe creating a, a hard copy for yourself so that you can start to highlight and, and pick out the ones that, that might make sense to, uh, to start with. And here is the download of that document. Again, you can choose to download it right now uh, or it will be sent after the session as well. Thank you, Sarah. So the first section is instructional approaches and class culture. So there's several factors that contribute to achievement. At the program or instructor level, those include things like small class size, uh, individualized instruction, a willingness of the instructor to use a variety of instructional techniques in all learning styles, and understanding learning strengths. Learner factors include things like self-determination, the ability to set goals, an understanding of their strengths and challenges, a positive attitude towards learning, and a positive belief in themselves. So you can see there's some things here that, that you may not have a lot of control over, for example, your class size, but are there ways in which those things can be managed um, kind of at a, at a micro classroom level um, that really speak to these things. Obviously, in terms of learner factors, a lot of this is intrinsic, uh, but so, some conversations or some strategies that we're going to talk about today do deal with that. Secondly, we have active listening. So listen carefully to what your learner says and, and certainly value their opinion. They're an expert when it comes to their learning and can provide really critical feedback around your instructional approaches. So this type of feedback should be built into the routine of the class so it doesn't really get missed. Next, creating opportunities for success. So learners with learning challenges often have low self-esteem and self-confidence and have had negative learning experiences in the past. So it's important to show the learner that they can be successful. Do this by starting the learner at a place where they will experience initial success, like with a strength area. Then increase complexity or change the competency to ones that, that they find more challenging. So when learners succeed, they can attribute their success to their own efforts and hard work, and this can create really more of an internal motivation to continue and succeed. Learners need a consistent approach. Consistency is important for many of us. However, for learners with learning challenges, consistency and clarity become much more important. The class should be overtly structured by times of day, days of the week, etc., so that they can prepare for what's coming and know what's expected of them. And I completely appreciate that in the LBS classroom, uh, this may not be feasible because of the structure of how that works and, and the independent the independent nature of, of many of those learners and how they're working. But are there ways that, um, that learners can be provided with a consistent approach even in their own learning? Be sure to define purpose. This is built into the Ontario Adult Literacy Curriculum Framework, uh, for our, just, just to have that out there for our employment service and community partners, so into the OALCF, but it's an important reminder to connect what a person is learning and why they are learning it. So explain why the skills they are working on are important for their goal pathway. For example, if a learner is working on grammar exercises and they're transitioning into credit studies, it may be very obvious, but connect that skill to the task that they will be performing later, for example, for example to proper for essay writing in grade 12 English. If a learner is working on skill development in math, say basic operations, they're on the, and they're on the apprenticeship path, highlight how they'll be using that on the job, maybe through looking at the essential skills profile for that position. Customize the environment. No need to delve into big construction project here, but it's important to think about the learning environment and culture and whether it meets the needs of learners with learning challenges. A learner may need lots of distractions to, say, to stay motivated, or they may need silence and very little visual stimulus. So is there a way for this to happen? Maybe grouping some learners who like to engage in discussion and allowing others to work more independently or with earphones on, for example. Learners with visual processing challenges may need to sit closer to a window for natural light. Things like that uh, need to be considered. Finally, create a learning community. So adult learners need a support network. Some may not have this at home. It's important to create a sense of community in the classroom. So consider things like putting up artwork, having a social space, or even having the learners design or consult on some of those classroom or social spaces. So these 
approaches uh, around uh, class culture and things that you can do as instructors or even uh, workshop facilitators, maybe f coming from employment services, uh, and even down to one-to-one -one interactions. They could benefit all learners or all clients, uh, but for learners with learning challenges, these things become quite critical to their success. Here are some examples of general learning strategies. Lesson closure. Um, and so this, this can really be put in the context of a workshop environment, uh, an, an employment concept, uh, any training that they would undergo. So be sure to debrief at the end of a lesson, workshop, uh, training session. Leave time to review what was learned and try one more example. That way you'll know if they're having difficulties. Next is self-reflection. Essentially learning how to learn. Encourage your learner to think about and better understand how they learn. So this could be done by asking them how they approached a task, whether it worked or didn't work, um, and what strategies could have been used. So this goes along with a learning log where the learner would take notes or comment on what strategies and accommodations are helpful and which are not. Next is frequent review. So this may seem obvi obvious, but learners with learning challenges typically have difficulties with short-term memory and certainly remembering concepts. Begin each section with a review of the last to determine whether to reteach or to introduce new concepts. So you may have a plan, but that plan may need to be adapted and, and kind of reverted back to when they're ready. Skill or task dissection. So break down a task into parts or sequences to make it easier to learn. Escargo is an, a really excellent resource for this to understand the underlying skills for task completion. So Escargo, if you're not familiar, is Embedded Skills, Knowledge and Attitudes Reference Guide for Ontario and it was made by Kesba in 2012. If you've not looked at this resource before, it is available at lbspractitionertraining.com. Again, that's lbspractitionertraining.com. Uh, next is a running record. So ask the learner to keep a written or oral record of lessons where they record the main concepts for review. So this could be in a notepad, it could be on their, on their smartphone, they could even record themselves for, for playback later. And lastly here is clear writing. So use clear, concise language and design to teach, give directions, and in the design of your activities. There, these are things like using bullet points, taking out unnecessary words, using common language, and design components such as 1.5 spacing, 12 point font, and a clear font without italics. So this goes along with the, the AODA, the accessibility legislation. A shameless plug here, the Learning Networks of Ontario does offer a 12 week online clear writing course. For more information, please visit learningnetworks.ca. There are two clear writing resources, a little one pager and a poster that will be included in the resources uh, after the session as well. Last week, you would have seen a learning style inventory sent in the email after the session. So here are some notes uh, with regards to specific styles. So visual learners use charts or diagrams to explain or present ideas, enjoy subject related puzzles and games, make use of films, videos, um, maybe they look at, at YouTube videos to assist them in their learning, use highlighters, and learn best by using concrete examples like maps, globes, models, photos, things that they can see. Auditory learners vocalize ideas as they're written down, discuss to learn and retain concepts and ideas, talk through ideas and solutions. They might benefit from things like word games, uh, seminars, group assignments, and can really make use of audio or visual media. Kinesthetic learners need to be an active participant in learning. So use concrete examples to assist learning, hands-on. Learn, they learn best by using things like role play, charades, group activities, demonstrations and presentations. They need opportunities to move around. For this next section, I'm going to highlight a few examples of the specific strategies by Processing Challenge Area. I encourage you to spend some time with the full strategy list and highlight the ones that you think could work for specific learners. So here are some examples of strategies and accommodations for learners with visual processing challenges. For communication, 
Learners with visual processing challenges typically have good auditory processing skills, so give step-by-step -step verbal and written instructions. In terms of reading, for decoding, you want to use a structured phonics program to increase reading vocabulary. These learners will have difficulty remembering sight words um, or, or kind of common words out there that may not, um, may not follow the spelling rules, for example, if you're not familiar with that. So it's important to develop their decoding skills in order to, for them to be able to sound out difficult words and their problem solving around how to use phonics to, to sound words out um, and how to then be kind of divergent thinkers if that doesn't work. For writing, again, phonics-based approaches will be key here. One example is to have the learner break up the word into syllables to hear the chunks in the words to then build it back up for the correct spelling. In math, Things like using graph paper will help with alignment or working in columns because this can be very difficult for this learner. And an accommodation, as we talked briefly about before, is check the lighting in the room. Learners with visual processing challenges will likely be very sensitive to fluorescent light. Natural light decreases the contrast they see and can help relax their visual field to allow them to take in more visual information like text on a page. So we talked a little bit last week about maybe you use uh, colored paper or maybe the, the text on the page is a bl dark blue uh, as opposed to uh, a black so that you, you kind of play with um, what they might be comfortable with. Here are some examples of strategies and accommodations for learners with auditory processing challenges. So for communication, learners with auditory processing challenges typically have very good visual processing excuse me, visual processing skills. So you see a pattern here where their strengths um, essentially align with their weaknesses, their, their opposites. Give visual directions as much as possible and give oral directions slowly and repeat them. In terms of reading, a phonics program may be somewhat helpful, but more than likely, using what we call a whole word approach would work better for these learners. For example, having them read their own stories or dictate stories in their, uh, in their own words, then have the learner copy it out or have them focus on the shape of words to remember spellings. So they're going to have uh, an immense difficulty using phonics. So to only offer them a phonics-based program is going to be frustra frustrating and you may not see the progress that you're hoping for. For writing, use word patterns or families because this focuses on the look of the words, the, the visual representation. In math, have the learner use different colors for different steps in math um, to provide a visual pattern to remember. And an accommodation, use visual aids, pictures, graphs, classroom signage for the learner to reference. Here are some examples of strategies and accommodations for learners with organizational processing challenges. So for communication, directions will likely need to be repeated and given in multiple formats, so oral and written. Using a timetable for lessons works really well here as well. In terms of reading, use pre-reading questions. For example, what's the text about? What's the purpose of the reading? And discuss the format of the text and how they can navigate it. For writing, it's very possible that these learners will have difficulty with the fine motor skills of writing. So you're going to have to teach letter formation. Give the, give the learner letter charts to reference and teach printing and even cursive writing explicitly. In math, these learners may also benefit from using graph paper and practicing working in columns to solve math problems. And an accommodation is keep to a routine. Help the learner make and keep to a schedule. Before we move into assistive technology, um, I just want to pause to give you uh, a few minutes to provide any kind of comments uh, or questions that you may have had as we walked through some of those strategies um, quite quickly. So I am just going to pause and let you uh, just take a minute uh, to see if there's anything that you'd like me to repeat or that you have a question about with regards to the very specific learning challenges that we talked about last week. Okay, um, could I get a, essentially a raised hand or a check mark um, if you're feeling like the pace of the webinar is okay?
great. I just don't want to be moving uh, too quickly. Sometimes when you're on a webinar and only hearing your own voice, it's nice to check in and make sure that people are okay. So Jean has added a, a resource that she has used, I'm assuming, and it's a piece of text-to-speech program software. Now, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Balaboyka? Uh, which is a free resource. So that's certainly not one that I have um, in my list that I'm going to be talking about, although I really just have one example for each. I did a, uh, because the, the resources I'm, I'm using are a little bit dated, I did do some searching yesterday um, and there are, if you just kind of Google search text-to-speech, speech recognition, uh, a bunch of them come up. Certainly you could look at um, kind of Apple um, Apple apps in, or Google Play, things like that, and a lot of them would pop up as well. So if you've used any of these types of assistive devices, please include them in the text chat uh, because, like I said, specific examples are limited in terms of what I'm going to be speaking about. So let's face it, apps are cool, right? There are lots of things that your learners are likely already using, from calculators to online calendars to autofill and spell check. What you want to consider when looking at adding assistive devices or technology is will it integrate into programming seamlessly and do you and your learner have the time it takes to learn how to use it effectively? It kind of has to be worth it. So if you're not already subscribed to both the Contact North and the Alpha Plus newslet newsletters, I'll highly recommend it. As our technological support organization, they oftentimes organizations, they oftentimes highlight various online tools, apps, devices, but even reports uh, for you as practitioners around blended learning and, and all sorts of um, practitioner development that certainly can help you um, assist your learners. So you may find there's something you want to try with learners with learning challenges on there. So I definitely recommend that. A few examples of assistive technology include text-to-speech software or optical character recognition where the computer reads the text for the learner, for example, natural reader. Speech recognition systems allow a learner to dictate what they want to say and the computer then writes it for them. Things like Dragon Naturally Speaking, that's a quite a popular one. Okay, it looks like Jenny has a question. Jenny, if you have a question, uh, I have given you access to an enabled microphone, so if you click the microphone icon to the left of your name, we'll be able to hear you. If you'd like to go ahead. Ed. Oh, okay, I'll take uh, your hand down, no worries. Th thanks, Sarah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jenny. Um, okay, where was I? Um, word prediction programs. Uh, they predict the next word that the learner may want to use. The learner types the first letter and the program starts to offer words. So this is built into smartphones, uh, but can also be integrated into word processing software as well. Uh, so one example I put up there was the I read write. So that's a, an Apple example. Um, Madeline says Google Docs has voiced typing as well, so that can be very helpful um, in terms of the, the Google Suite, especially if uh, the learner is, um, is using Docs or Drive or other kind of Google uh, applications. Word processors, like Word obviously, can be used for many things. So they have spell and grammar check. You can enlarge the print if you need to, change the background, um, increase spacing. All tools can be really helpful for learners with learning challenges. So what's important here is that they are given the direct instruction on how to manipulate their documents for their benefit. So all the examples given are easily found using an online search and many more are out there. Um, but just a recognition that there are so many things that could be integrated into the classroom in, in terms of a blended learning environment. Um, and definitely, uh, it's, it's worth spending some time on uh, and utilizing those, those resources. So keep them coming. Uh, if you do have other apps or software applications or devices that you have used in the past and that have gotten good feedback. There are also strategies in the, in the document for other factors. For attention, 
we've probably all uh, worked with learners or clients that have either a diagnosis of ADHD or ADD, attention deficit disorder, or they may just self-report that they've always struggled in this way. So it's important to discuss individual attention strategies that they've developed to focus. That may mean they have to play with a pen, tap their foot, listen to music, or they may need a quiet space, both from auditory and visual distractions. Also, have them monitor their attention throughout the day to find their high and low attention points. Then you can make their schedule around when they're most alert, potentially. Mnemonics can be very handy for memory issues. Using a trick or rhyme can help them remember certain concepts or rules. Lots of repetition is needed, and instructions need to be clear and short. Here, using multi-sensory and multi multiple learning style strategies works well to reinforce learning. For personal and social strategies, it may be beneficial to look into wraparound referrals. Is there a support group that they can attend? Nonverbal cues may need to be taught explicitly. Also, model positive self-talk when they are learning. Far too often, learners with learning challenges get down on themselves very quickly and they may give up. An example of positive self-talk is something like, this is a difficult skill and I'm making progress. If I keep up a good effort and use my strategies, I'll get there. This self-talk can combat low self-esteem and puts them in control of their learning. So you might be sitting there thinking, oh, learners aren't going to do that. But give it a go and have those conversations with learners. Model positive self-talk as you're teaching, as you're discussing, as you're sharing uh, moments in your life with your learners because they can internalize that and start to create more of a, a positive self-esteem if they're using that. Uh, Madeline has a couple other suggestions. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, word Q and Y Vic have worked well for us for word prediction. Great suggestion. And on-screen keyboard for learner uh, who use switch access on the computer. So thank you. Uh, it's, it sounds like you have um, been using lots of really innovative strategies with your learners and I invite you to keep them coming. Self-awareness and self-direction, uh, these go hand in hand with the OALCF competencies of managed learning and engaging with others. For self-reflection, encourage learners to think about the ideas they have about themselves and the messages that they have received from others in order to challenge them. They need to analyze the barriers they face, both external and internally. That way they can work to make both more positive to move forward. Making connections is important. Learners need to relate to others in the class and work to understand different perspectives. Developing the ability to work as part of a team and understand personal and team strengths is important for interpersonal development. Practical strategies to increase independence include things like helping learners work on how to find information, learning to question, to understand other perspectives, and to communicate their needs. Help them to develop decision-making and problem-solving skills. Very likely, many of you have been engaged in these two competency areas. Maybe you have offered some targeted training around these specific things or have, have learning groups or learning sessions that are really outside of academic content that they deal with more of the, the soft skill issues. Um, so please, please, please include those comments uh, in the text chat uh, because some of these approaches might be things that other people can then use in their classrooms. For those learners moving on to credit, apprenticeship, or post-secondary, it's important that they prepare to take tests. So there, there are other strategies around, uh, around these goal paths in the document, but I wanted to highlight this. So some strategies include talking about the different types of questions. So this isn't necessarily implicit for learners, that they need kind of some direction on how to approach these things. For example, multiple choice, true and false, short answer, essay questions, and what the approaches they can take with, with, with each of those. Also encouraging them to jot down a few formulas, facts, and figures that may help them during the test. May start, it may allow them to feel more confident that some of those important key points are, are kind of out there. Also, have them skim over the test first to get a real feel for what's 
what's on it so they can plan their time accordingly and teach them about budgeting their time between the different types of test questions. Obviously a really easy application to our own curriculum in literacy and basic skills programs um, is the, the milestone activities and the culminating task because those are uh, very similar. They, they feel they're kind of test situations and so that could be a learning opportunity to try to discuss those things and help them transition into, into more of those formal learning environments. Most secondary and post-secondary institutions will offer specific accommodations if the learner has a formal diagnosis and documentation. However, it's important to research the requirements before applying. So before they apply, they should really make an appointment with the administration specialist to see what supports would be available to them. In many cases, our adult learners don't have access to a psychoeducational test, uh, but I encourage them to still sit down uh, with someone in admissions to really get a sense as to what they would have access to. In terms of employment, this is where it, it's important to have the learner develop a relationship with an employment service, not only at exit from literacy and basic skills, but during programming. For a pre-employment, career exploration may be needed to determine a goodness of fit between the learner's interests, skills, and accommodations they may need at work. Specific skill development for the employment goal will be key to helping the learner transition successfully. Essential skills profiles are a really good way to understand what skills are needed on the job and which ones could be worked on as part of the learner plan. Essential skills profiles can be found on the jobbank.gc.ca website under Explore Careers, then you go to Education and Job Requirements and look under the Canada tab. And if you uh, scroll down, you will see that you can expand those essential skills listings. There's also a very easy print feature as well. The learner will also have to work on their self-advocacy skills so that they can articulate their strengths but also articulate what accommodations they may need on the job. In terms of employment, learners should ask for written job descriptions and expectations with timelines. The biggest issue for employment strategies is whether or not to disclose their learning challenge to their potential or current employer. There is a pro-con list on page 160 of the strategies resource that might be helpful when discussing this issue with your learners or clients. There is some information there as well for employers. So you're welcome to share this information with employers if you think it could be helpful, uh, or certainly repackage it in some other way. There are some suggestions for each of the processing challenge areas for employer consideration. So this could open up a really good conversation to make the employment environment one where they can grow and succeed. So I'm going to pause again very briefly um, because that is kind of the end of the bulk of the strategy uh, section. Uh, and then we're going to be moving on to talk very specifically about direct instruction. So I just want to make sure that there aren't any questions or comments or just pause so that you can um, just kind of get a sense of the, the content that we've already covered. Great. Could I get a show of green check marks for those um, that have seen or used these strategies before in your classrooms? Good. Absolutely, this is not recreating the wheel. Uh, these are not new and innovative approaches, but rather very key reminders um, of the, the things that, that you probably do to some degree um, in, in your classrooms or working with your clients. Um, and But also just kind of a springboard to try out new things that maybe you haven't tried before. So thank you for, for doing that. Uh, so there's some questions about the Job Bank website um, and the essential skills. So if you go to, I'm just going to repeat this, um, if you go to Job Bank, I'm going to type it in here, jobbank.gc.ca, um, you're going to click on w Explore Careers, and then that will take you to a page where you can then fill in the job that you're looking at and the city or area that you're from. 
Then you're going to get a dashboard with all sorts of labor market information and wages and you're going to click on the education page. And then in education, you're going to see uh, that there is by region, by province, and by Canada. And the, the Canada tab, uh, because essential skills are a national program, is that's where you will find the essential skills profiles. Okay, any other questions before moving on? I'm wondering also for the participants that we have in the session, how many of you have seen the strategy document uh, that was provided by handout? Okay, so it is rather new to people, so that's good. I'm glad that it, it'll be a hopefully a good resource. Okay. So most of us use learning strategies automatically to fit our needs. We use verbal rehearsal to remember someone's telephone number. We remember musical notes by saying every good boy deserves fudge or using a mnemonic. However, people with learning challenges do not necessarily use these strategies automatically. That's where direct instruction comes in, which is the explicit teaching of a learning strategy or accommodation. So it involves six steps that you see on your screen. The first is explanation. So what is the intention of the strategy or accommodation? Modeling. How is the strategy used effectively? So use the learner's current work, if you can, or your own work. Self-instruction. Have the learner explain the strategy and how they use it. Practice. Provide various opportunities to practice the strategy on different tasks. And provide and get feedback. Provide affirmative, constructive feedback and ask the learner if the strategy is working well and how they're using it. Are there changes that we need to make? Finally, implementation. Encourage the learner to report independent and routine use of the strategy. So this method is, is also good for teaching new academic skills. It just kind of breaks it down and makes sure that all of those pieces um, are done to really internalize the strategy or concept being learned. I'd like to t take you through a concrete example of this, and for this I'm going to be using the direct instructions example document. So you see here that there is the download to the PDF, um, and I believe Sarah is going to uh, bring it up on screen. There are uh, essentially on the first page it goes through the explanation of what direct instruction is that we just covered. Oh yes, Jean, thank you for this comment. A lot of this information uh, when we talked about essential skills can also be found on the Ontario Skills Passport website. Uh, and so, Jean, if you wouldn't mind throwing up that URL as well, that would be great uh, for people. Uh, it's a very good reference. And in fact, Ontario Skills Passport has things like um, self-assessments on there uh, and different kind of they can make their own training plan option and all sorts of stuff. So that, that's an excellent resource for people. So back to the direct instruction examples. So on the first page of that resource, you will find, uh, again, an explanation that we just covered uh, in terms of what direct instruction is. And then it goes through th three very comprehensive uh, examples, each for one for each processing area. So I thought that we would just talk about the, uh, the organizational processing challenge area. And the strategy would be using a timetable for lessons. So you might think, well, that's easy enough. You know, you just have a conversation with your learner and, and away you go and that will be implemented into your programming. So instead, what I'm going to be really discussing are the, the different pieces that make sure that that's going to be a working strategy moving forward. And again, I mean, if you look at all the strategies that we've talked about and you put direct instruction right over the top like a blanket, that would be your strategy, your overarching strategy, in order to implement any of those smaller strategies into, into your programming or into your work with your learner. Thank you, Jean. I see that you've, you've included that URL there. Um, so anyone that is interested to, uh, to look at the Ontario Skills Passport website uh, has the resource there. So the first step is explanation. So to the learner, you may say things like, we're going to set up a timetable for your lessons so we can break the class into different times for different activities. For example, we can use the first 15 minutes of the day for review and what you worked on last day. 
then the next 30 minutes. So you, act, you actually look at developing a script for how you're explaining that to the learner and giving them examples as, as to what you might implement. Okay, so making sure that you're connecting it, that it's going to help with, with different types of activities that they're working on, um, and to provide them with the different pieces of time that they're going to need um, in terms of reviewing and learning new skills. Modeling. So at this point, you want to maybe show them your day timer and how you organize your day. Explain why you give more time to some activities over others and how you came up with that, that essential formula for your, for your day. It's a good way to discuss priorities. And you can also make an entire, you can make a timetable with the entire class. That might be an effective uh, use for, for class culture. Next would be self-instruction. So work with the learner to build their timetable for class time. Have the learner explain why they think it's important to break the time up into sections and work with the learner to find appropriate lengths of time for each activity. So remember that managing time for these learners is incredibly difficult and this is something that they will have to practice um, and that there may be on and off situations where you know for maybe a week it's all good to go and then something kind of falls apart maybe in their in their uh, their lives outside of the classroom and this becomes um, much more critical. The next step is practice. So have the learner take out the timetable every day. Like I said, part of routine um, when they get to class and set it on their on their desk for reference or maybe have their phone on their desk if that's not um, against policy. At the beginning, check in with the learner really frequently to make sure that they're using it um, and just making sure that those reminders are there at the beginning and the end of the day. And they could also build that in, into the evening timetable as well, scheduling time to do homework or scheduling it around other personal activities that they have going on. After about a week or whatever seems appropriate, you want to check in. Are they using it? Uh, is it helping them keep on track? Because if, if the strategy isn't actually working, it's not really effective, why do it? So maybe it needs to be modified or extra supports need to be put in place. Maybe a, f a family member or friend reminds them of their, their timetable at home. Implementation. So once the learner is comfortable working with a lesson timetable, they may want to create other timetables outside the classroom, like a weekly errand running to ensure everything gets done by Saturday at noon. I'm not sure where I would be without Google Calendar. I, I have no idea what day it is uh, or, or what appointments I have unless Google is telling me. <laughs> so. Uh, Jean also writes color coding with the time, um, oh, excuse me, with time management so the learner knows as soon as they see a particular coding and they know instantly what they have to do. I think this is fantastic uh, and certainly with uh, learners that also have visual processing challenges that can be very critical. So uh, remember, not all strategies will work with all learners and some strategies you know, may take longer to implement than others. Um, it needs to be individual, it needs to be ongoing, the dialogue has to be there consistently. If a strategy doesn't work, even after a review and repetition, it's just time to find another one or to make the changes to make it effective for that learner, for you as an instructor, and for the classroom as a whole. Um, so I'm wondering how people are thinking about direct instruction. Is this a new concept? Uh, certainly pieces of this it would just be organic in terms of the learning um, the, the, the learning technology or sorry the, the learning methods that you already use um, in your classrooms. But I am curious as to how people are thinking about this and whether dissecting it in this way may be helpful um, in terms of implementing strategies in your classroom. Jennifer says, I think it's good to break it down into steps because it's sometimes hard to remember that it's not just intuitive um, if it's intuitive for you. Thank you for reiterating that important point, Jennifer. Um, and I, I think that it's, it is quite easy to just say, oh, we're going to do you know, these, these 17 strategies. And um, I think as, as literacy practitioners or employment service practitioners, our passion is for our students. Um, and we want to do the best job for them as possible. And sometimes that mean, might mean uh, overwhelming them with new ideas. And, and that's quite honestly, what I'm hoping to do to you today is overwhelm you with some cool new ideas that maybe you can implement in your classroom. Uh, and I think that the, the next step would be to really think um, 
specifically about which ones make sense, where to start, and to use direct instruction as the method to uh, delivering those messages. Okay, Sherry says, thanks, we're already using a class agenda and this is working well. That is good news. So, um, you know, you, you may want to consider more of a, a classroom activity uh, so that, you know, it's something that can be, be discussed as a group and, and utilized as a group um, and then maybe individual learners kind of include that as uh, one piece of their kind of personal calendars as well. Very good. Here we go. So in the handouts, there's a strategy development exercise. Um, there is one that I'm going to be looking at that is specifically designed for literacy and basic skills practitioners. But there's also an exercise specific to employment services that will be shared in the post webinar email. Uh, but I think that Sarah may have it for touring today as well. So we'll take a look at both of those resources. So these are follow up activities essentially to this webinar and it helps to solidify some of the tools and strategies that we have discussed. So I'm going to take you through the exercises and encourage you to, to take it offline and work through it on your own or with your instructor team. Uh, so this would be a great activity for things like a staff meeting or a training follow-up or just personal PD. Um, and I think it's really, really important to, to take it from just listening to a webinar uh, to really working with the strategies and, and writing some things out and, and trying to decide how you would use direct instruction. Um, I would love to have been able to kind of do it uh, with you um, and certainly we're going to walk through the questions and any comments that you have attached to that please offer them uh, but I think it probably makes more sense to to give yourself a little bit of time to digest the information to review the strategy list uh, to look at the direct instruction examples and then when you're ready kind of implement that into more of an activity base so that when you go to work with your learners that you're feeling pretty confident about what your approach is going to look like. Again, here is the download for the Learning Challenges Strategy Worksheet specific for, specifically for literacy and basic skills practitioners. Again, you will see in the, um, in the email after the session that there is one uh, for specific to employment services as well. Oops, so uh, I'm going to ask Sarah to bring up the, um, the one specific to uh, liter literacy and basic skills practitioners and we're just going to take a tour of that uh, worksheet. So here is your homework guys. All right, so the first page uh, you'll notice has three different uh, case studies. So I mean, if you're if you're a real keener, you can do all three. Um, but we've tried to uh, position them in such a way that they're kind of different and, and maybe kind of um, resonate with you in terms of of, the, of your learners. So first, we have Tara. Uh, Tara has a lot of difficulty tracking text. She often loses her place when reading, skips lines, leaves off endings of words. Uh, she has a visual processing challenge. So we know that that's pretty common uh, markers for, for folks with visual processing challenges. And she'd like to work on tracking and reading comprehension strategies. Her goal is to, to complete her grade 12 diploma. So of course her goal path is credit. So if this resonates with you, if you have a lot of Terras in your classroom, uh, maybe not with visual processing challenges necessarily, but that that goal and that goal pathway um, makes sense for you, then this would be a good case study to work on. Next we have Robert. He has trouble saying what he means. He has a lot of difficulty with word retrieval, has a limited vocabulary. He's really nervous when speaking with unfamiliar people in a group and, and in a group setting because of his difficulties. He has an auditory processing challenge and he'd like to improve his speaking skills. So his goal is to improve his skills for work in construction. So his goal path is employment. So this is a little bit of a different one. Certainly utilizes the competency um, of uh, the, the oral language. So if, if that kind of resonates and, and maybe you have a lot of learners that are on the employment goal path, then that might be appropriate for you. Finally, we have Eric. 
he forgets many appointments, has difficulty with getting to class on time, has difficulty following a schedule and judging how long a task will take. He has a lot of difficulty organizing his notebook and work, often misplaces or does not complete his work. He has an organizational processing challenge. So he'd like to work on some organizational strategies. His goal is to get his GED for college and he wants to go into the social service worker diploma program. So his goal path is post-secondary. So you have three to choose from. Of course, you're welcome to develop your own case study based on your learners. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, but if one of these, uh, for the purposes of this activity, makes sense for you, then uh, then for sure I encourage you to, to work with, with those. Now, one quick note or a reminder in terms of the difference between auditory, visual, and organizational. It is extremely rare um, for someone to have both an auditory processing challenge and a visual processing challenge because those things typically are like apples and oranges and the way in which they present themselves but also their strengths. So you'll notice when we talked about the, uh, the challenge areas um, and the strategies is that you know learners with visual processing challenges typically are very good with auditory processing. Right? Um, and if you have an, a, a learner that has auditory processing challenges, typically they have a very strong visual learning style. Uh, so just kind of a caveat there. However, and this is really key, either one of those learners that have visual or auditory processing challenges could very well have difficulties in organizational processing or those nonverbal uh, LDs as we talked about last time. And they may also have um, factors or barriers around personal, social, attention, memory, all of those other things that we talked about. So I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. So back to our strategy development worksheet. So page two um, looks at uh, starting to develop, um, has, has a question. So using the strategy list and your own experience. So Sarah, we're on page two of the, the PDF, if you wouldn't mind going back to your app share. Thank you very much. So um, it asks you to identify which, um, which scenario you're going to be working on. And then it says use the strategy list in your own experience to brainstorm lear learning strategies and accommodations that might help this learner. So that's where either a digital um, PDF or using even a printout uh, to start to list some of those uh, areas that might be helpful is that you can put them there. Okay. For example, you want to go to the strategies and accommodations for learners with visual challenges um, section if you're working on the Terra case study. Now the next page asks you to do some work with direct instruction. So you want to select one of the strategy for, from the, the bank of strategies that you selected for that learner and describe how you use the different direct instruction method to teach this strategy. So it asks you to kind of dissect how, how would you explain it, how would you model it, what would self-instruction look like? How would they practice it? How would they give you feedback? And how would you know that it's been being implemented? So this is kind of a tough one, but it, it helps you try to uh, dissect what that's going to look like in terms of implementation of that strategy and just gives you a sense as to then you can have that transferable skills to use that with other strategies. I'm not going to lie, that one takes a little bit of time, um, but each time you do it, it gets easier and easier, I promise. Question three, uh, moving on to the next page, is what type of structure or routine could you put in place for this learner? Because we know that that's really important. What OALCF, or Ontario Adult Literacy Curriculum Framework competencies and task groups will you focus on for this learner? Uh, obviously, this is probably, um, well known to you because of the learner plan, but just kind of connecting those things. Next, what accommodations would you implement for this learner? So are there things that you really need to think about in terms of the environment, in terms of um, what devices they're using, all sorts of things. What are the steps involved in reaching the client's goals and how long do you think it might take? So again, coming back to the learner plan and how do you then integrate all of these things? Is it important to have a discussion with your learner about the fact that their learning plan might take a little bit longer? They may need to consider part-time studies. Uh, they may need more time because they're not just learning the academic skills, they're learning how to learn. 
and they're they're having to implement learning strategies that they're going to use and transfer to different environments. So that's sometimes a, a difficult conversation, but a conversation nonetheless that really needs to be talked about um, and giving them the opportunity that maybe they've never had to be in an environment where they are developing those strategies that may stay with them for life. Question number seven, what are some strategies that may benefit them into their next step? So are there considerations that need to be looked at for a further education and training goal or an employment goal? Um, is there a connection with employment services that's needed? Are there connections with the, the next step, like the credit program? Do you need to further understand what that credit program is going to look like? Do you have to look at the post-secondary goal path and what the environment is? Are they going to need to make an appointment with an admissions counselor, look at the, the time frame for when they're going to apply to college? All of those things. Um, would need to kind of be looked at um, with regards to what strategies need to be put in place. So that's your homework for the Literacy and Basic Skills practitioners. Um, Sarah, if you could let us know if you have the opportunity to give us the uh, employment one, that would be wonderful. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, so this could again be a group activity, it could be a staff meeting, but it could also be uh, something that you utilize on your own. So you would again, you're kind of presented with a couple of cases and then you'd answer the questions below. So Ben um, has had many labor jobs for short periods of time typically let go because he has difficulty filling out logs, so not filling them cor out correctly, there's missing pieces, he's often late, he has visual and organizational processing challenges. So now Ben would like to get into the construction trade, he's good with his hands and enjoys building things, his wife is really supportive and has encouraged him many times to retrain. So um, I'm hoping that that resonates, but again, you can create your own uh, case if it makes more sense. Now the the non-organic thing about this activity is that very often you won't know necessarily if he has a visual or organizational processing challenge. And so these folks should, of course, be encouraged to connect uh, with a Literacy and Basic Skills program for further strategy development uh, so that you can work with them together with the, the upgrading program um, so that you would have a sense of this information. Secondly, we have Lori. It's an excellent reader, but has always struggled with spelling and expressing herself to others. She has an auditory processing challenge. She's well aware of her difficulties and has found many coping strategies to, to use and get around her difficulties, like using a computer um, or using the dictionary. She's worked in retail in the past, but would like to work in an office. So if we can move to the next page. Here's where we get into some questions. So again, very similar to the LBS directed one, you'd identify who you are going to be working on, Ben or Lori. And then question number one is, what are the major employment barriers that you would need to look at for this client? What predictors of success do the, does the client have? Uh, so I know that it, oftentimes, in terms of the, the work that you're doing with clients, uh, that you do have uh, different inventories that you're doing around strengths and around uh, what, how, what skills they can leverage, what transferable skills they have. Um, and that could be intrinsic, it could be hard or soft skills. What employment services would you recommend? So in your own house of employment services, what are the things that might benefit this learner? Um, specifically, if you're, if you're working with youth, I think we, I saw that there was someone from the, the Youth Job Connection program. Um, and so what are the, the services in there that may, might be helpful to those learners, to those clients in that case? Next question, what are other services, if any, would you recommend? So now we're talking about other, other community services. Obviously, literacy and basic skills comes up here, um, but are there other wraparound referrals that this, this client may need around maybe their, their mental health, maybe their self-esteem, those types of things that obviously have a very uh, significant impact on employment. Next question, would you encourage, encourage the client to self-disclose their learning challenge with an employer and why or why not? So I, I think it's helpful to look at that pro and con list and, and to get a sense of the types of conversations you've had with past clients. Um, and obviously this is an individual thing and it really depends on who the client is and who the employer might be, uh, but that's certainly something that you need to kind of to brainstorm. And what strategies would you pass on to the employer for this client or would you? 
Uh, so I think that's a really important question too in talking about what the strategy list has to say about resources specifically for employers. So I hope that you're going to find those activities helpful. Um, I absolutely encourage you to connect with me by email uh, if you are working through that and have questions or comments. Um, and so uh, yeah, I, I certainly welcome any comments that you have in the text chat or if you wanted to add a comment. Um, but I absolutely do hope that you will you will take those back and uh, and do your homework. Okay. Moving on. So just to kind of sum up, and I'll, I'll certainly take questions as we go. We may end a little early today, which is great. The most important elements to use in the classroom or in a workshop room or one-to-one -one for learners with learning challenges is to use direct instruction of learning strategies. Teach material in small chunks. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Teach material in a variety of ways. So a variety of learning styles, um, using multimedia. Think of uh, innovative ways to express the information and repeat the information that isn't the same as yesterday. Help the learner learn through meaning or association and develop a structure or routine. So these are kind of a lot of the common threads that we've been talking about today in terms of the interpersonal strategies. Meet with your learner in a private space if possible. Avoid using jargon, so you don't want to use terms that they may not understand or may not mean much to them. Listen to your learner and try not to interrupt them. Let them have that space to communicate their needs and how they're feeling about their learning. Keep note-taking to a minimum if you can. Keep it conversational. Uh, I know that I'm very much a visual learner. I need to write things down. So I'll, I'll say that I'm going to be making notes and I'll share those notes with them so that they know how I'm going to use them. And try to ask open-ended questions. Again, around interpersonal strategies, a lot of what we've been talking about too is how that learner or client sees themselves. Um, do they have confidence? Do they have um, a self-esteem that's, that's positive? Do they have positive self-talk? So that's kind of the other end of this coin. What are your interpersonal strategies that you're going to need to implement with these learners? And how are you going to address uh, their interpersonal challenges, both their view of themselves and their interaction with others? So just to review, we've discussed a variety of tools that will hopefully be helpful when supporting learners or clients with learning challenges. The learning challenges characteristics document is a helpful reminder of the main characteristics, both general and related to reading, writing, and math that you could see in your learners or clients. You can choose to use the learning challenges pre-screen by incorporating it into your intake, assessment, or ongoing assessment processes. It can help you to see if there are other factors that need to be dealt with and if outside referrals need to be made, and whether the learner may have learning challenges. The definitions of mark of and markers document defines and explains visual, auditory, and organizational processing challenges. You may need to observe and discuss with your learner for a time to determine what types of challenges they may be facing. And again, I mean, really, further assessment would probably be needed in that case. Once you have an idea of the challenges your learner may be facing, you can use the strategies document to identify some strategies and accommodations that might be helpful, certainly with the use of direct instruction. This will have to be an ongoing process with constant monitoring and discussion. So utilizing these materials can help strengthen your learning challenges toolkit and help learners overcome their barriers, find strategies that are helpful in the class and beyond to help them reach their goals. I encourage you to visit the Learning Disabilities of Ontario and Canada websites, as well as the Copian Library. These sites have a wealth of information in terms of research, characteristics, stories, and project work. Uh, so if you have time or if you're looking for something very specific with regards to learning disabilities, um, these are some, some great resources uh, that have a wealth of information and, and typically full downloadable PDF documents. Similar to last week, an evaluation will be sent after today's webinar by email. Thank you to those who have completed the evaluation for last week's, week's session. The resources shared will also be made available as well um, as the slide deck. 
Are there any questions or comments about today or last week's session? I'm happy to address them now, either from the text chat or please let us know if you'd like to use the microphone. Um, I will say thank you so much for attending today and of course last week. Please feel free to connect with me by email if you have questions after the session. I encourage you to look for additional webinars being offered through the online Community of Practice webinar series and thank you again to Sarah Stalker from Contact North as well as Literacy Link South Central for coordinating these sessions. At this point, I think we could probably um, pause the recording and um, I'll take additional questions.